What up, Toe Connors? So, if you guys missed the Dragon Ball Heroes stream that happened a couple of days ago, or if you missed my recap video talking about everything after the fact, you missed five new awakenings that are going to be coming to Dokkan in the form of Goku, Vegeta, Zeno, who now awakened to Super Saiyan, and then three Trunks Fusions, who now have their own Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 3 awakenings. Pretty cool stuff. And one thing that stood out to me when I saw this, actually the first thing that came to mind was, oh boy, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks Zeno, that makes this guy completely useless. Now, they're not exactly the same name, so they can be run in tandem with one another. But in a vacuum, this guy was always one of the less favorable units in Dragon Ball Heroes. Because he's got no defense. He's very, very old. He is among the first. Look at that. June 6th, 2017 was his initial release date over on JP. So he has not. he's been around for a while, and he's just not somebody that you would want to use. So the point of today's video is going to be just going over the idea of EZAs because I feel like we've gotten to the point now with Dragon Ball Heroes where we've amassed enough units here where we could warrant a couple EZAs here and there, especially if we want to keep this celebration, this moment in the Dokkan timeline every year a little bit more relevant. Because if we just keep on throwing out newer and newer units, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna boost sales initially, but the longevity of the category and overall just the, the appeal of this portion of the year might lessen if people keep realizing that every single year that comes by, the last year's units become less and less relevant. Because that's basically what happens. All of these older units, like for example, this is 2017's batch, this is Gen 1, we'll just say Gen 1. These guys just get thrown into the pool of general units, and that unit pool just keeps increasing year by year, and you now end up not wanting to pull these guys. Now, I mean, they're still good, but you know, when you're summoning for these units, if you end up pulling someone in the general pool, your general reaction is just like, oh, okay, let's try again, right? So some of these units, I feel like, suffer from this more than others. So I think it is time to give us a crossover easy area or some sort of an easy A. Yeah, I, I would probably say an easy area would be more appropriate just because there's so many units coming in every year that it would probably not be something that they would want to do to give units their own Extreme Z battle each and every time. Just do a crossover one. My voice just cracked again. Just do a crossover easy area where you can have units like Gotenks, other crossover units like maybe the Android 21s from the Hero of the Fighters collaboration, or maybe from Fusions. That could be a great way to bring in the Fusions units into here. So let's go over a couple units that could benefit from some easy A's. And let me know in the comments if you guys agree, disagree. Let me know some ideas for easy A builds if you want. Let's get creative. Starting out with the Gotenks. This guy with his TUR, you know what it's going to look like. It's basically going to be the same thing. A little bit stronger, base passive, more stacking. Some other condition that happens at the end. Basically, this guy is just awesome. So what do we do to this guy to make him compatible with him or at least competitive with this guy? Well, one thing you can do is kind of build this guy similarly to his same universe counterpart. Because this is from our main universe, Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, the tech one, is just the past version of this guy. So why not build them the same way? Because actually their passives are exactly the same. Attack plus 120 when performing a super attack. This is pre-ZA. And this guy does the exact same thing, attack plus 100 when performing a super attack. So with this unit's EZA, he got a lot better. Obviously he doesn't have the triple attack roulette thing that uh, the young Gotenks does, but he can at least get a better passive in terms of offense and defense. Boost his offense a little bit, but give him a defensive game as well when he is 11 or less, sure. I mean, in this particular case, since he's got one super attack, just give him the base defense. So give him attack plus 150, defense plus 60 or something like that. That alone makes this guy a lot more usable. And then maybe for a super attack, it could be a raising attack and defense for six turns. The reason why I think that would be an excellent idea is because he kind of falls in line with these two units, right? These two are also Super Saiyan 3s, and they have attack and def or some sort of stat boost, but for nine turns. So what they could do here is give this guy the nine turn counter, raise attack and defense, because that will be basically part of the set. This guy raises defense for nine turns. This guy raises attack for nine turns. Why not have him do a little bit of both? Pretty easy fix, if you ask me. Next, let's move on to... Janem Baby. Janem Baby is part of the Gen 1, and this guy is irrelevant. I used him once recently for a Janemba video, but that was only because I had to. <laughs> if I didn't have to, I wouldn't have used him. This guy is just outdated. Simple. 
High chance to evade enemies' attacks. That's not a unique trait. That's not even a unique trait within the Janemba units. He has to have a little bit more to actually warrant his use. His recovery could use a little bit of an improvement. His base passive should be higher. And what they could do, just an interesting thought, you know, this is just my opinion. What they could do is maybe combine some of the perks that some of the other prominent Janembas have. Let's just take these two, for example. The Int Janemba and the STR Janemba. One has a passive that's sort of predicated on if you get hit while you're guarding, you get a little bit more powerful. Whereas the other one, if you dodge while, you know, post EZA, you will be able to dodge a little bit more successfully. So let's combine the two and let's have it where if this guy dodges, he gains some stats and then he just gets more stacking that way. And then to kind of offset the fact that he won't have a guard, maybe they could give a higher recovery rate or maybe they do give a guard. Having a guard and a recovery option would be an excellent thing for this guy because then he's definitely a viable unit to bring on a particular team. So yeah, just build on this, integrate some of the other Janemba passives in here. It would make him a lot more fun to use because honestly, the S tier Janemba is one of the more fun units that I enjoy running because of that fact that he dodges at a certain clip. The next dodge that he has goes up a little bit and it kind of integrates this like, I don't know, gambling factor in there. It's kind of like the Vegito Blue for me. It's a pretty fun thing to do. So give give this guy more dodge and more stats that way. Up next, we got Toa. Toa is not someone I think needs an EZA as bad, but then looking more at her passive, I feel like she does. Because if we look at Freaky Toa, Freaky Toa released, I think, two or three years after. She's a full-on lead for the category, and then her base passive alone makes her a lot more viable. She is a decent lead, an amazing support, and she heals, and she's actually got some pa some stats for herself. And since she's lowering the enemy's attack and sealing them, her attack defense stats actually come into play here. Whereas this Toa doesn't seal, she just lowers attack. So if she doesn't have some sort of like damage reduction or a solid base passive, she's likely gonna get you in a lot of trouble. So you definitely wanna be bringing somebody else to tank those hits or they could just give her a base passive of her own. Maybe make her a little bit different. Give her that damage reduction that the Freaky Toa doesn't have. Could be a thought. Up next, we've got the Super Saiyan 3s. So this is the one that I was talking about before. This is actually probably my most used unit in the first generation of Dragon Ball Heroes units. The reason why I use this guy so much is because he can actually serve as an amazing tank, both in Super Battle Road and in the Legendary Goku event. And I absolutely love using this guy. Nine turns of defense boosting, attack and defense plus 100%, disables enemy guard that I don't really care about so much for this guy in terms of offense but he does disable enemy guard but the thing that annoys me is that he has a high chance to guard attacks I have lost several runs on the legendary Goku event because of this there's no need for this everybody talks about how stupid this is just give him the guard even if you have a guaranteed guard not everyone's stats is enough to actually tank certain hits so it's not that big a deal to give a guaranteed guard so with an EZA, this guy could just get a full guard. And if you combine that with nine stacks of this, well, it wouldn't be nine because he would be coming back at the very least every other turn. So let's say five turns of defense plus 30. That's a pretty sizable stack if you ask me. Combining that with an obviously increased defense count, this guy would be your immovable object, your go-to tank on any event anywhere. And I would definitely use this guy again. And then on the flip side, you have this Super Saiyan 3 Gohan, who is basically the offensive-oriented unit. He does a lot of damage. I think it's when you link him with the LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku, he can do obscene amounts of damage. I don't remember what the, the best linking buddy is for this guy. I don't use him too often, mainly because he's an offensive unit, and I don't really feel comfortable bringing him on some of the long-form events. So what they probably want to do is just give him more stats here. And uh, yeah, I don't really know if they would change the turn count. That would be a tad ridiculous what they would probably do for these two is just increase the amount that they gain maybe this would be defense plus 35 or maybe they would greatly raise attack for one turn and then keep the attack the same this actually i think is okay defense plus 30 for nine turns this gohan raises attack by 30 percent for nine turns so they could just raise the other stat greatly for one turn that's all we need and that's pretty much it for the gen ones so, uh, I mean, th there's Boobity and there's also Super Pycon. They could also benefit from it as well. I just don't want to go over every single unit and bog you down with my 
you know, mundane speculation. You can let me know in the comments which units you think should get easy eyes and what they would look like. But I do want to point out there's a couple free to plays that would greatly benefit from it. This Cumber is a massive, massive bummer for me because every single time I want to get an additional super attack, I have to have this guy get hit. But the problem with this guy getting hit is that he is a free to play unit. So I don't want him to get hit, especially until he gets some stacking going. By the time he gets his stacking going to the point where he could maybe handle a base hit, we're already, you know, turn six, seven, eight, nine into a legendary Goku event run where the enemy is already stronger. What I don't want him to get hit. <laughs> so it's kind of a catch 22 for me. So maybe if they were to give this guy a stronger base passive, maybe some sort of level of damage reduction, I think that would be a great thing because this Cumber often reminds me of Broly. So if they could give this guy a damage reduction passive, kind of like the Int Dokkan Festival Broly, not exactly like that, but it would be a nice thing to have to actually make this free-to-play viable. I want to run this guy on Pure Saiyan's Legendary Goku event runs, but I simply can't because at the cost of an additional super attack, I put the entire run at jeopardy. He's not from the first generation of Heroes units. He's, from, I think, from the second one. This is from the World Mission, right? I think he's from the World Mission... Uh celebration or maybe before i don't remember i just want to point out some free to plays y'all know i love me some free to play this is salsa he is a poor man's version of the supreme kai of time he greatly raises defense for one turn and he seals it's a nice combination because when the enemy can only use their attack your defense number is what actually counts problem is this guy's just so weak make him stronger that's my recommendation make him stronger make him better you also have to have some free-to-play easy A's in there. You can't just have summonable ones. Last couple honorary mentions. Demigra, Makiyuka for him. Uh, simple fix, give him defense. He's a support unit. He nerfs the enemy's stats. Uh, just give him some defense. That's all. We've already seen this taken care of with some other support units by adding some defense to their builds. We also have two TURs coming soon. Free-to-play TURs for the World Tournament who were able to boost their defense significantly to make them actually more survivable as support units, so give the same treatment to this guy. Just give him a greatly raised defense for one turn as well, and that's all I pretty much need for this guy. Last one, I will mention, just randomly throw this out there. It's great say, man, three. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand why we have to have this defense minus 30 within the same turn after receiving an attack. He's trying to counter these attacks. Why would you ever want to run him when his defense is compromised? And you can't counter super attacks. You can only counter normal attacks. So this defense minus 30 is a pretty heavy penalty when you think about it. So, uh, yeah, change that maybe. Maybe uh, give him some, uh, I don't know, damage reduction? Make him like the Super Vegito? How many times has my voice cracked in this video today? I'm gonna stop here before I sound any more stupid, but let me know in the comments what you guys think of some of the units that I've pointed out, not as far as what their EZAs could be, but just as far as which units were identified as ones that need EZAs. Do you guys agree, disagree, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments what is your top three desired EZAs for the Dragon Ball Heroes units. And then name one EZA outside of Dragon Ball Heroes, but still in the crossover. Maybe Xenoverse, maybe Fighters, maybe Fusions. Name one other unit that could benefit from an EZA as well. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more dope content in the future. And click the notification bell so that you let YouTube know you want to see more of my stuff. Do it. Thanks again. Stay tuned and always remember to Dokkan responsibly.